Today I'm going to do something new I've never done before. Ay caramba! So the first thing I'm going to do today is drain the water on my boiler. And that is the Central Boiler Classic CL6048 and I'm going to add two gallons of a corrosion inhibitor, the Mali Armor 350. And the second thing I'm going to do is I have to fire it up. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to do both things on this one particular video i may split it into two not sure yet but yeah it's gonna be an exciting day it's about 10 o'clock in the morning now i'm hoping to be completely done by sometime tonight uh, maybe by 6 or 7 p.m because when i fire that boiler it's gonna take a few hours for it to heat up right now the temperature is probably the water temperature could be around 40 or so uh, maybe less and we'll see that later but the water temperature has to go between be has to rise up to between 175 and 185 so it's going to take a few hours to drain the boiler a few hours to fill it up and to fire it up it's going to take several hours as well but once you add the um once you fill up the water tank, and by the way, that's about 400 uh, gallons of water in that water tank. Once you fill it up and you add the uh, Mali Armor uh, corrosion inhibitor, you have to circulate the pumps, obviously, after you bring the temperature up on the boiler, after you fire it up. Now, one thing I have to mention is, like I said earlier, I've never done it before. Everything I'm about to do today, I learned it from a pro and that's homestead j and i'm gonna link them down below now for some of you that have been here for a while a few weeks ago uh, i posted a video where eight turkeys were walking in front of my house and today is sunday november 21st we're just a few days for thanksgiving and i'm hoping that the turkeys come back because all i need is one it will be nice to have one at least. Um, add a little bit of sofrito to it, adobo. Yeah, Thanksgiving's just around the corner. So a couple of days ago, I was in Philadelphia. I stayed there for a couple of days and then I visited my uh, family in South Jersey and my sister gave me a bottle of Coquito and believe it or not, I left it behind. I stayed at my old house in Cherry Hill and I put it in the fridge and I didn't realize I had left it behind until I came back up to upstate New York. And for those of you that are new, and I have a few new subscribers over the last uh, month or so, um, I am up here in upstate New York. I moved up here maybe two months ago, two and a half months ago, and I'm building a homestead from scratch. So most of this, if not all, it's going to be new to me, and I'm learning as I go, and I hope to... I hope that you guys learned something along with me. So yeah, let me uh, get cracking. Okay, but before I start, I wanted to mention something. This boiler, uh, I saw it for the first time a few months ago when we came to see the house for the, for the first time so we can make an offer. Now, when I saw it, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was some kind of gigantic barbecue or a uh, some, some type of smokehouse for meats or something. No joke, I didn't open it up, I just saw it, didn't think anything of it. I put in my offer a few hours later. I love the house, I love the land. And yeah, it was accepted that very night. Then the next day, I'm reading through the uh, home description and it said wood boiler, central classic, uh, or central boiler, or something like that. And I'm like thinking to myself, what in the world's a wood boiler? So I decided to Google it and i'm like holy <laughs> holy cow and i don't i don't know i didn't know what to think of it at the time but as time passed i'm like wow i'm gonna have a lot of fun this winter i'm gonna have to uh buy wood or cut wood uh go out to the uh to the woods back here or in the front of the house and cut some trees and 
No, but everything's turning out uh, really better than expected. Everything so far is working out. Obviously, I haven't done any of this before, and I'm about to find out how it is, but uh, you guys are going to come along with me. So as you know, I cleaned the chimney a few days ago, so we're good to go on that. And yesterday, I replaced the rope seal on the door. And I'm going to open it up for the first time here today. Oh, yeah. Oh, check it out. Rope seal is looking good. Yeah, I can't wait to fire it up today. All right, so this is the access panel right here. And I'm going to turn the unit on. And there's the water temperature. 43 degrees. Yeah, I was right. Very close. So yeah, it's getting chilly at night here. It's dropping into the 20s every night. It's November 21st, as I said earlier. And it's getting a little late. Uh, so yeah, I need to turn this on as soon as possible. So one of the first things you have to do is check the water line. Water level here is full up to here. And I took this tube out yesterday and I cleaned it because it was black and I couldn't see anything inside. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and you see that how the water went right up to the top. So I'm good at the, at the, with the water level, but we're going to drain it anyway. Now I know some people normally change your water in the spring at the end of the uh, wood burning season and they add uh, sludge conditioner run it for five days drain the water and add the uh, molly armor uh, rust inhibitor uh, but in this case the previous owner of this house told me that normally he adds a rust inhibitor at the beginning of the uh, burning season and that's what i'm going to do now so come this spring i want to do a little bit more maintenance on this what I want to do is I want to add the sludge conditioner, run it for five to seven days, drain it, and fill it up again and add new uh, rust inhibitor. So yeah, that's, uh, that's in a few months from now. All right, guys. So this is a Mali Armor uh, 350 corrosion inhibitor. So it provides water jacket and pump protection. Now this is your new stuff. The, previously they used a different type of corrosion inhibitor so that was replaced by the molly armor now if you read the instructions where we are to add one gallon of molly armor for every 200 gallons of uh, water and i have four uh, i have 400 gallons of water so i need to add two of these now it also says that anytime you add water to the system it is important to immediately bring the furnace up to operating temperature, which is 185 degrees. And it says to circulate the water for at least 24 hours and then test the treated water. I don't have my water test kit, but I'm gonna order it tomorrow. So I may not test it uh, two days after I turned it on, but you know, it's uh, better late than never, right? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut off the water valves so it doesn't circulate to the house to avoid any water pockets so yeah everything's shut off now i'm also going to take off this access panel because i'm going to connect the hose uh, right there at that spigot and drain it to the woods now this water the water that's on this boiler is non-hazardous so obviously it's 400 gallons of water with a rust inhibitor and we can dump it uh, back there in the woods and the previous owner did exactly that. Now, if I had antifreeze, that's a different story. If you have antifreeze on your wood boiler, you do not want to spill that on your woods. It's going to damage the soil. You may want to contact your township and see where, how you can collect the water and dispose of it if you have to. But um, yeah. In this case, we're good to go.
guys, there's the spigot. I just need to go get a hose now. All right guys, so I have my hose here and I'm ready to plug it to the spigot. But before I do, I wanna collect some water to see what it looks like. And I'm gonna take this cap off first and fill my container with water. see that it looks very very clear almost like drinking water it's not dirty no corrosion so that tells me that the previous owner really took care of this system check it out so now I'm gonna connect my hose that is good that is good that the water came out clean Wow, nothing in, nothing. It doesn't look uh, like no pollutants whatsoever. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and drain it. Let the adventure begin. And let's go, go check it out at the other end. So I'm gonna run it right behind the woods here. That's 400 gallons of water. There's a lot of pressure. And let's see, is it draining? I may have some ice on the line. There we go, guys. So, yeah, I have some ice buildup on my hose. You see all these little chunks of ice there? It's going to take me a little bit to clear it up. Alright guys, so we're doing good now. Now, see all these chunks of ice? It built up on the uh, on the hose over days. So lesson learned, keep the hose inside if it's going to be too cold outside. Don't leave the hose outside. Alright, so I'll come back in two hours and check to see if it's been flushed. Alright guys, so I decided to come back and check the water one more time as it's draining. yeah it's very clean all right so guys i communicated with jay over email and one of the things he suggested was to install a sediment filter the type you use on the rvs and this is what i picked up at walmart this is an rv water filter so it protects against bad taste odor sediments bacteria chlorine and much more but we are concerned about sediment you don't want any sludge or any sediment building up on your boiler because it messes up with the pumps and any moving parts in there so yeah so i'm about to put this on and yeah any water going into my boiler is going to be nice and sediment free clean so jay thanks a million so this, fi this filter comes with these two parts. It comes with the filter itself and this little hose attachment, which you're gonna plug in here like so. And then you're gonna unplug the filter from the top and just connect it to there. I can't do it obviously with one hand because I have the camera in the other. I'll be back in a second. There we are cool this is really nice so i am ready to rock and roll okay so we're done we're done draining the tank so and it took two hours to get it done okay so now i'm going to connect the uh, hose to this filter and start filling up the boiler Take off the cap. And what I'll do is I'll fill up for a half hour and then come back and add the Molly armor and top it off. I figure it's going to take about two hours to fill up. It's 2 p.m. now. I'm looking at 4, maybe 4.30. Yeah, 
You guys can hear that? That's the water filling up the water tanks. All right, guys, so it's time to add the Mali armor. This has been, it has been filling up for the last 30, 40 minutes. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, one down, one more to go. And then to top it off. All right, guys, so the boiler is filling up. It's been about an hour and it looks like the sun's starting to go down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare the wood. I'm going to have to start filling it in so I can uh, turn it on tonight. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be a very long night. All right, guys, so I've been out here for the last 20 minutes and it just filled up or it went up to the uh, full water level. Let me uh, turn it on. I don't know if you can see that, and you probably can't, but the water line is right up here. Right there, right there. Yeah, it's getting dark, and it's only 4.26. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off the water and build a fire. Guys, it's gonna be a long night. Here we go. 